Right. Well, I would um, um, let me answer that. Well, let me not, let me avoid that question, perhaps. Right. Um, uh, because I think that um, what has become increasingly clear at the end of the 20th century is how much 20th century art is trying to teach us about objects and, and about object culture, which is to say about um, how objects make meaning, how objects make uh, meaning for us. Um, and I think uh, right now, certainly within the contemporary art world, um, there is so much installation work. Right, and I'm thinking of uh, Tara Donovan's um, incredible styrofoam cups, which end up looking like clouds because glued together. Um, a lot of refabrication, or Sarah Zay's um, production of these object ecologies. So it's, you know, toothpicks, um, Q-tips, some scraps of this and then the other thing, and they, they end up being this um, sort of cosmos. Um, and artists like that, I think, and not just those artists, um, I think really mean to be alerting our attention to other ways that objects might be configured. Um, or as I like to put it or have put it um, in one essay or another, uh, the possibility that uh, the material world might want to be organized other than the way we've organized it, right? So that the... That the um, the desire, the denim of your jeans or the cotton of your t-shirt, um, the object of its desire might be to be a different object, right? Your t-shirt might actually want to be um, part of a flag, the, the, you know, something along those lines. And I think it's, a, it's been a very um, uh, contemporary art, it's been a very powerful conduit to those sorts of ideas. And those sorts of ideas philosophically are very much part of, uh, say, um, vitalism. I'm thinking of only Bergson, um, um, and then Bergson as, uh, as rethought by, by Deleuze. Um, but it's, uh, I think it's only in the presence of such art um, that you r really experience um, some of these alternatives. Or, or is it what I'm, what I'm calling something like um, the, the desire, the inanimate object world's desire to be reconfigured, to have a different shape. Right. And, and right now, around the, around the city, around your city, if you look at um, uh, Orozco's work uh, in the MoMA, um, with, the, with something like the, the yogurt tops on four different walls, or Urs Fischer at the New Museum, those um, huge aluminum sculptures. Uh, I mean, these are all, this is all work that is very powerfully, I think, um, uh, dramatizing um, the, the presence of um, objects and the importance of um, objects, as opposed to, say, images. Um, and I think that, you know, if, if something happened in the 20th century, it's that image culture ended up trumping object culture. And we have great theories of image culture, too. De Boer's Society of the Spectacle, Baudrillard's um, Orders of Simulacra. Um, and, and we do, I think, also have um, powerful theories of the object, but I think that it's really image culture and, um, that, that got the most attention um, in, at, towards the end of the last century. Um, there's also, there's another artist um, a Chicago artist, uh, Marie Crane Bergman, who, who has for years been doing um, vast monochrome um, canvases uh, made up of um, very, very small sort of hillocks of paint. Um, and now one of the practices that she's um, uh, taken up is to put paint, acrylic paint, on the floor um, and then to pick it up and hang the paint after it's dried and hang the paint. So she will do grids, for instance, and um, hang them up and then the grid will sag a bit. And, and one of the um, obvious um, effects of that work is to make one recognize that you know, paint is never still. You know, paint is always moving. You know, a, a 15th century painting, that, that paint is still moving. It might be moving very slowly, but it's moving. Um, and, it's, and it's also, you know, to my mind, a fascinating way for um, painting to be attending to a different material ground, not as Greenberg and others would say about flatness, about, um, about the shape of the canvas, but rather to the paint itself, 
right? So now it's just the, the paint unsupported, as it were, or supported just by a nail that becomes the art object. But there's another moment where, you know, you, you really do experience with those works um, the, the vitality of paint, even if it's drooping. 